And so the Museum of Unit 731 is located right here in Harbin, China, because this is the exact location where the compound stood, where some real unspeakable horrors were perpetrated by the Japanese onto the Chinese. And the museum does a good job of showing not only the experimentation that was done in the compound, but also how this was used to then create biological warfare that the Japanese used against the Chinese in something that I would call World War II, although a lot of this stuff happened in the 30s, sort of previous to World War II. And so I use the term unspeakable horrors because a place like this sort of tests the limit of my vocabulary because it's a place that leaves you at a loss for words with just how horrific everything was. The only good news I can provide is that the museum is so incredibly full of Chinese people, including youngsters. So it seems like uh, the Chinese population is eager to learn about some of the darkest days that their ancestors had to overcome in, uh, in the 40s and in the 30s. And so in a vlog like this, we're gonna take this scene into another scene where we go out and explore Harbin and have a good time and be joyful. But it's always tough to uh, transition from scene to scene because the museum here is really heavy and there's some unimaginable suffering uh, happening, happening. And so in any case, Yvonne and I were curious to see because it is some of the darkest days of what I would call World War II and it's curious to see how the Chinese would present this story to their people and they've done a great job. The museum is massive and full of people and it really is a comprehensive uh, review of everything that happened. And so I'm glad we came here, although I am heavy in the heart, obviously. But like I say, from this scene to the next, we'll go explore Harbin and have a good time. So it's a, it's a somber start with maybe a more hopeful finish to this video, right. we can say. So let's go check out Harbin. And so, one of the things we've noticed here in Harbin, everybody seems to be eating ice cream, believe it or not, in this temperature. So I think I'll try it, because it seems to be a ritual here. But first things first, before we have some dessert, we're gonna go for some local food. And believe it or not, it's Russian-influenced food, because uh, Harbin is so close to the Russia border, it's got a lot of Russian influence. And uh, some of the food here, totally unique in respect to the rest of China. So let's try some Russian food on a cold day. <laughs> Let's go. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, made a new friend. Let's go eat. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ivana has found the most Russian store I've ever seen. We got sausages up front. We even got Russian dolls on the wall over there. <laughs> Are you gonna buy some? I'm not sure what this is. It's heavy though. Heavy? <laughs> Sounds yummy. Heavy means juicy, doesn't it? <laughs> and so Russian products everywhere, including but not limited to Russian vodka. Now, I'm the kind of guy, I like my vodka as expensive as possible. Let's find the most expensive one. This one here, 600 UN, which is not too bad of a price. And it says minus 59 Celsius with a polar bear on it. That's my kind of vodka. Not bad price, actually. <laughs> nice. Now, this is something Ivana and I have seen more than a few times, and we don't know what it really is. You can see the Russian lettering on the sign, and there's bread here, and people seem to come by and take photos, like a selfie opportunity with a big loaf of bread. Potentially fake bread, because everyone's just selfieing with it. But this is a Harbin tourist attraction. It's the bread selfie. <laughs> If anyone wants to explain that one to me in the comments, feel free. <laughs> I don't get that one. <laughs> it looks fun, <laughs> I guess. Found Russian food. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Harbin got the best food in all of China. Fight me in the comments. Listen, Chongqing, my favorite place I've been so far in terms of a city. But the food there, too spicy. Shanghai, my first love in China. You guys remember, fresh off the plane, first time in China, which is Shanghai. So I'll never forget Shanghai. But Harbin got the meat. Check this out. I mean, how could this be bad? Uh, 
the absence of mustard is palpable. But other than that, this is a perfect plate of food. We're gonna go right in for the sausage here. Uh, would you assume this is ketchup? Yes. Ketchup, right? Let's go. Let's try. Very good. Actually, getting me excited to go to Russia. Is Russia known for sausages? Yes, I, I, I guess so. If you guys remember, Ivana and I went to Germany years ago. We were very excited to eat German sausage. We landed, we tried it, we couldn't afford it. So we took a bus to Poland where we found the sausages were better and like a quarter of the price. Right. So maybe the further east you go, maybe Russia got some good sausages because this is good food. Mmm, so. this one even better. Mm. Really? I like a sausage where the outside of it has a snap to it. You know the outside layer? When I bite my teeth into it, I want it to go, you know? Right. That's what I like for a good sausage. And then the, the inside explodes with juice. Mm. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Absolutely five star eating. And sorry, a lot of husbands, when their food comes, they wait for their wife. I know. Evidently, I am not one of those husbands. <laughs> Can you share your food? Please, Ivana, please, please, please. Every couple in here, they're sharing we are, food. We are just like them, Ivana. We're just like them. I am not one to deprive my beautiful wife of some lovely meat. Go ahead, go ahead. Please, 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 please. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Plus, it's a nice break from the noodles and spicy noodles. Oh, garlic bread has arrived. Mm. Of this a uh, chunk of meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just ground meat in there, it's, it's juicy chunks of meat in there. Right, right. Oh, this one? The sausage still got like Asian taste though. Like the spices in it. Don't you think so? It's hard to explain what you mean. But it does have a Asian flavoring. Yeah, exactly. Uh oh, uh oh. It has arrived. Ivana's main dish. And this looks pretty Russian to me. It looks like the top is covered in mayonnaise. Yeah, it's kind of like Russian salad, isn't it? It's like a Russian salad with, uh, is that mashed potatoes in the bottom? Yeah, I think so. Go for it, Ivana. Knock yourself silly. Oh my gee, that looks so good. If there's one thing I like, it's melted cheese. Oh my gosh, Ivana, what are you doing to me? Try it, try it. Go ahead, go ahead. With olives and, I guess it's a, uh, Pickled cucumber as well. Man, it looks good. Mm. Mm. Cheesy. Very comforting. Comfort food. Good for the good for the weather. Mm. Yeah. Very comfort. Very comfort food. And so along this main street here, you'll see more than a couple Russian restaurants. So easy to make friends in Harbin. And I guess the Russian restaurants are here because Russians have been coming here since the early 1900s. In fact, the big church we showed you yesterday, which is St. Sophia Russian Orthodox, was built in the year 1907. And so I guess it should be obvious that Russia and China have this huge border. They obviously have these cities that have some cultural exchange and culinary exchange. But in my head, I think of Russia over here and China like a million light years away. I don't think of much overlap in my head. And so that's been one of the joys of traveling China is uh, discovering all these hidden gems. And so I think we'll walk along the main strip here for the next while because what better place to walk and the weather is actually pretty warm right now would you say it's still cold Ivana doesn't agree but i think it's pretty nice and maybe just maybe we'll get some ice cream because as, as you can see there's even someone right here eating ice cream so maybe we can get some ice cream ourselves i think this is a rite of passage in harbin is the sub-zero ice cream eat so let's see if we can try it ourselves there's cheese flavor cheese flavor cash Two, twenty for two, 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 two. Okay, okay. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. No problem. It's my mistake. Okay, two for two for me. Me and my wife. Original. Original. Okay, shashe, shashe, shashe. All right, Ivana, it's time for ice cream in the cold. You look ridiculous. <laughs> Coldest person I've ever seen. With ice cream in her hand. Ice cream in minus 
15 degrees. Oh, yours good. The ice cream won't melt. Right. Take your time. Eat it slowly. Not gonna melt. Good ice cream. Um, you see this is vanilla flavor? It's a bit like banana. You're right. It's a little bit banana-ish. But it's, it's supposed to be vanilla, I think. It's pretty rich. Pretty dead. Very rich. Uh -huh. This is a good treat. Oh, I'm glad we got this. Good ice cream. It's good. It's good. Very good. I'm a fan. All right, let's walk and see what other Russian-inspired fun we can have. Ivana, would you say the ice cream is making you warmer or colder? I thought it was making me warmer for a second, but I was wrong. <laughs> colder, right? Colder, yeah. <laughs> Say. Look at this. So sweet. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Canada. From Canada. Thank you. Sushi. Bye bye. Oh, how sweet. So nice. You want to give us a postcard? Yeah. For free. Right. <laughs> nice. That was a nice moment. Steve is one of the Russian doll. <laughs> you need to become a babushka for that. Should we break this new one? Let's check it out. Oh, this tree made bread. Like kurtos, I think. Let's see. Nah, this is a fake, Steve. Oh, this is a fake one, dude. It's not real. Uh -huh. I got tricked. No, no, no. I think they're selling it somewhere there. Everyone's holding it. Right it. there. Like chimney bread. Of chimney bread with ice cream again. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so good, though. Actually, it might get more ice cream. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Am I crazy? Go, 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 go. I've been in line for about an hour here. Everyone keeps going in front of me. You gotta shove in there. Yeah. Come on, Steve. Make your way up. One. One. No, no one. No, only five. One. 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 No, he's asking. You just want one? I think that's why he's asking. Yeah. This one. Okay, so they have one. One. Okay. I don't know. Six five. I got the ice cream too, but I couldn't resist. Okay. Ice cream. Over there, over there. Ah. Uh, just shake, just shake. I'm excited for this. Ah. <laughs> so they're in a different spot. So they put ice cream, yay. It's a lot of ice cream. I'm gonna be frozen now. There you go. <laughs> Spoon. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, how do I eat this? You just slam your mouth with the and slurp it. No, 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 no. Come on, Imana. I'm gonna take the top. <laughs> Slow motion effect. <laughs> mm. My god. Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. How is it? It's good ice cream. Oh, no, no. Good ice cream. It is good. And I'm hoping the bread is still warm. But it doesn't look warm because the ice cream so. is not melting. Yeah. So it's more like a cone. Yeah. Then it is a bread. Mm -hmm. Still good. And by the way, everyone's doing it, okay? Everyone's doing it. Everywhere you look, it's selfies with the bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's a touristy thing to do, actually. It's fun. I'm glad to I've do it. I've seen people eating ice cream, eating that popsicles. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone holding a hot tea. No, no, no hot teas. Even little kids doing it. Yeah. But no hot teas. <laughs> you think it would be hot tea, right? <laughs> Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> It's good, but I feel like a fool. I'm so cold. <laughs> Everyone's doing it. I got pure pressure. It's caught for the moment. Oh, gosh. It's pretty good, though. Oh, oh. This is cool. They're making a new one. You said ice her. blocks. They're kind of setting them up, getting them ready. Wow. Sculpting them. This guy over here in the front has a chainsaw. You can see the blade oh, yeah. sticking out. That might be the more fine tuning. Oh, 
curve right. and stuff. And this is the base on the bottom, the foundation here. Cool, right? Yeah, cool. I mean, those guys are so used to the cold, they never complain. <laughs> Every day in the cold. Working with ice. <laughs> right. Wow, good for them. I admire their craftsmanship. By the way, the ice cream never melts. Oh, it actually has a cone inside. They put a cone inside. Yeah, <laughs> but this has been half an hour and it doesn't melt. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I tell you what, I think we've made it to the end of the laneway here. And so I think just on the other side of this main road here is the river where there's a smaller sort of ice festival and some beautiful buildings here. Maybe we'll try to cross the main road here and see if we can get down by the river. Let's go check it out. <laughs> it's like a uh, Russian McDonald's. <laughs> Something new. <laughs> All right, so we've made it across the road and we're coming up towards the miniature ice festival now. To be clear, this is not the main event in Harbin. Yesterday, Ivana and I were at the main event, the proper Harbin ice festival, and both of our heads exploded. We absolutely loved it, but today we wanted to try something different. And so now we're walking along the main street to the river where there's a similar thing, I believe, with some ice sculptures and some snow sculptures, although maybe not as big as the ice festival. So let's uh, check out the riverfront. Check it out. I guess this is frozen water from the river? Yeah, I think so. Okay, you got the jeeps going in circles, similar to what we saw in Ice Festival, and people all around. Oh, look at the cable car. Look over there. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like a dot on the screen, but we can see it here. Wow, let's go check it out and see what we can see down there. Okay. Something interesting. Let's check it out. <laughs> oh, ice. I think the river freezes over. Yeah. That looks like it's just solid ice. Yeah. Like all the way to the riverbed. Yeah. That's Actually, amazing, right? the ice that we saw on the ice festival. They harvest it here. Yes. Got it, got it, got it right. <laughs> they harvest it here, build the structures, and then they make a big festival on top of the ice. Right, right, wow, right. Cool. Look at this. Lots of different winter activities. It's like a sleigh. Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's like two school chairs <laughs> with skis on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come Chair on, with make skis. it move, make it move. Come on. Go, go, go. <laughs> look here. The bikes are cool. The bikes and skis in the front are cool. Here it is. It's a, ski. <laughs> it's a chair ski. <laughs> it's so funny. I've never seen that before. Look at this. Chair ski. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that's always impressed me about China. Ever since we first started coming here, they seem to have a very good idea about how to organize things in the space that the nature has given them. So in this instance, there's a huge boardwalk here all along the river and i mean absolutely massive so there's lots of space for everybody and then along the riverfront is where the festival begins and there's all sorts of different staircases on the way down and you can see the grid pattern almost of all the different events and all the different trucks pulling people at the riverfront so it's very convenient for a tourist who doesn't speak any chinese because you can't really get lost it's very organized and sort of well done and so i'm not sure if this fits under city planning or if it's more like party planning but it seems to be the theme of every chinese city we go to whenever we go to a festival or an event usually pretty well organized and they maximize the space very well it's like they have a clear vision of what they're trying to do and they execute very well very good. so another good party for us and honestly harbin was a great pit stop but we are about to make like a shark and break out of here baby because we've only got a 72 hour visa, which is a real bummer. Because we tried to do the most of our time and do everything we could in three days, but three videos in three days is the best we could do. And there's lots more to see. So yeah. we could add Harbin to the list of places we really enjoyed in China. Right. And stay tuned to our channel for more China good stuff because hopefully, fingers crossed, even though I'm wearing gloves, can you see it? That's a finger crossing. Uh, we will be in Xi'an for CNY Chinese New Year. 
that's our plan for another 144 hours, which is uh, six Xi days in Xi'an for Chinese New Year. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're gonna go back. Once the sun goes down, it gets bitterly cold at Harbin. Yeah. So we're gonna head back to our accommodation and uh, warm our bones. But thanks for watching, and shout out to Harbin for the most unique festival we've ever seen uh, in the winter time. Just amazing. Right, panda out. Panda out. <laughs> Mango pizza. Don't tell the Italians. <laughs> but listen, Harbin got the best food in China right now. This is good Western food. Very good. Obviously not Chinese and not Russian, but pasta, Caesar salad, pizza, uh -huh. and a big chair. <laughs> Five stars. Five stars.